Welcome to season two of Fractional CMOs and the 90 Day Win. I'm Dean Wei. This season, we're going to talk through scenarios that companies and these CMOs experience um, to share lessons learned and trips on how to get the most out of the fractional CMO that you've just hired. Uh, so, all right, so let's jump right into it. Um, hi, Stefan. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, okay, so you just started a hypothetical one year fractional engagement, okay? And today's yep. day one. Yep. What's the first problem that most of your clients need you to start fixing? Or what's the first problem you go looking for? Because you know it's there even if the company hasn't perceived it yet. And maybe before that, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Stefan. I'm doing fractional marketing for maybe like 10 years now. Um, I focus on companies who have a long sales cycle, who have um, where sort of like marketing and sales have to work together a lot. Um, and they work with mostly with B2B companies. Um, yeah, so I think that the, the foremost and biggest challenge that companies nowadays come to me is like, oh, we want more leads, like more leads are better quality leads. Yeah. Which, which is a question in itself, you know, it's like, uh, you can get uh, better, faster and cheap, you know, you cannot have three at once. Like it's either better, it's either faster or it, it's like expensive, right? So you can combine. So, um, you, I would say that, uh, the first is that I need to understand if, the company gets marketing that marketing is not a, a cure for all diseases it can help it can help with um, brand awareness it can help with acquisition in some cases it can help with nurturing most and most most often i see uh, marketing helping with nurturing uh, those leads that sales just cannot keep all the bo all the balls in one basket so we help with nurturing a lot um, I would say that that's the main um, task to understand that uh, the uh, marketing well that the leaders of the company, the, the C-level, understands what marketing is for and what's the role of marketing and what sort of KPIs are assigned to marketing. Um, and I think a, a, a thing in it is the attribution. So maybe you've heard about all of these like um, attribution wars between marketing and sales, right? There, there are a lot of funny videos where it's like, yeah. oh, I actually, actually that lead came from a, from a webinar we made seven years ago. So that's actually marketing. So... Right. Let's attribute it to marketing. I, I... <laughs> so um, those 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 things do exist. So I've I've been in those sort of cases. Sales says um, inbound uh, is not their marketing sense. We gave you like a lot of inbound. You just don't know how to sell. Um, it, I, I guess clarity uh, is is the thing that um, you need the most when you start an engagement with a client. Okay, and then Tony, hi. Hi Dean and hi Stefan. So yeah, so Tony Watkins, um, I'm a fractional CMO. I work with companies where really growth has stalled, where it's just flatlined or plateaued, if you like. There's right. a last hurdle to return to growth where there's really a need to move the growth strategy to action. And really I specialize in that's where I, you know, you sit a CMO in a marketing role who can translate that growth strategy and drive it to activity. Um, I've actually been agency side for the last 17 years or so, focused on technology channels, getting mixed into all those kind of problems where you get fracture points and things where, you know, just growth just stops and breaks down. Um, for a lot of companies that are actually a lot of them, then, then they're kind of household names, folks who have heard of in that B2B kind of enterprise tech space. Um, from my point of view, and actually I'll pick up on what Stefan said about, you know, there's a lot of issues of, of alignment. And I think the first problem for me is to actually, to, to fix is actually, what is the problem? Um, there's so many times where I've worked on engagements where it's, you've been brought in by somebody, somebody's identified an issue, but that right. somebody has inevitably briefed you and you've quoted and you've got in on the strength of their angle, their lens. And rarely is that the whole story. So I think one of the first things you've got to get in and fix is to actually figure out where's everybody at that's involved in this. This is never one person's one person's problem, whatever the articulation is. So there's got to be, um, you know, a willingness and a sense of urgency within whoever's really got the problem. But there's also bringing about that sense of alignment. You know, getting over the well, why are you here? I know you've been brought in, but maybe I wasn't included in that discussion and all those kind of issues. So I think the first thing really is to get a handle on the true problem, bring the stakeholders together, get all those opinions out on the table. 
Um, there's a large part that I think CMOs can do to actually help people understand how much they have in common and how they share. You know, so back to that alignment, sales versus marketing is a is a great one. Is it a marketing pipeline and a handoff to a sales pipeline? Or is it actually a whole process that we see now of driving somebody with a need who doesn't know about you through a process, educating them, bringing them all the way down, what we call the buyer journey, to a point we want to engage in sales because they're in that apocryphal 5% that's in market. Mm -hmm. So I think getting alignment, getting a handle on the true problem, if you do that, the rest of your engagement is going to flow a lot easier because everybody knows while you're there and they feel a lot more comfortable about what you're actually doing. I was in, uh, I worked for two different enterprise software companies and one, there was really good alignment between marketing and sales and one, there wasn't. I'm going to give you a very quick example and you can tell me whether they were aligned or not. They were, in, it was an uh, executive leadership team meeting. The head of marketing said, oh, and by the way, last month we provided sales with 3000 leads and the head of sales was there and he says, what the hell are you talking about? You gave us a bunch of first names and Gmail addresses. We sell enterprise software. Well, you know, the, the, the not so tightly about, aligned in that. Yeah, case. well, the interesting thing about that is I think we you get onto it is is how they're metriced. So <laughs> that's that's a slightly different that's a slightly different problem. But when it yeah. goes up that far, oh boy, yeah, that's a fun place to be. No, absolutely. I mean, my whole business is based on I, I only do the first um, stage of buyer's journey, right? It's my job to talk to prospects or like market to prospects who've like you know or strangers, and make sure the right people are coming through and to get all the right people. And uh, it is like very, you have very bizarre discussions with people who think that like just about anybody who will download a PDF is a viable prospect down the road. And so like, that's kind of a waste of money to go after those folks, man. Uh, okay, Tony, then how about this? All right, we, we've talked about that. We've talked about the alignment. Let's, let's shift to the CEO for a second, right? Someone made a decision yep. to bring you in in this hypothetical one-year engagement, right? Like other than like, opening up, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the details and sharing the information you're going to need. Like what else should a CEO do to like, extract maximum value from a fractional CMO? Or if you want to answer it this way, what do yeah. you notice CEOs doing where they waste the money that they spent on a fractional uh, CMO? So, so this is the conversation you're hoping you have before you start. Right? <laughs> yeah. But, but back to what I said to question number one, rarely, rarely does it go down that way. Yeah. So, I, I I kind of thought about this and I thought, well, you know what, there's 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 four things that I try and, and cover off when I'm when I'm actually talking to people. And the first thing is is saying to the CEO, do you know what? You're gonna let me need to actually focus on what I do well. If I come in and we go from what we talked about and why you brought me in and the strengths and the skills that I've got, and we suddenly start talking about, great, now you're here. You know, that one size fits all replacement right. for every aspect of creative, copy, media, campaigns, et cetera. It's just not going to work. Yeah. That's not why you brought me in, and it's actually not what I'm good at. So that, I think, is the first thing, is let us focus on what we do well. The second thing is, is then let's make sure we keep focus. I, as a CMO, fractional CMO, I'm going to keep you honest on what we signed up to together, right? So a ton of stuff's going to come up, and that's great. And mm -hmm. we can make decisions on whether that actually influences what I plan to do so heavily that we have to change something. But what we don't want to do is to get chasing off after the next bright idea that came up. And again, you see that happen an awful lot, right? Is people just lose focus. The longer you're there, they lose focus. So that's that's a great thing. I think the third um, for CEOs, just a reminder, uh, be open to challenge, particularly in the early days. You know, yes, you need to extract that information. But going back to what I said in the first point, as I uncover what the true problem actually is, I'm going to need to come back to you and ask you some stuff that might even make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. If I can't do that, if we don't set the rules of engagement that says that's OK, then you're not going to get full value. Um, and then the last one is making sure that the CEO is able to talk about the business goals. This seems like a really dumb thing, right? Like what CEO doesn't know the business goals, right? But how do they articulate that? And how am I going to articulate that to the rest of the business that I'm working with? So yeah, there'll be a there'll be a grand plan. There'll be a North Star. But let's just bring that a little closer to home. Okay, there's a revenue target and let's say the next 360 days. Let's just take a yearly revenue target, right? But talk to me a little bit about how that's made up. Is this... Right. 
95% referral and 5% new client. You know, let's get into some of that detail that's going to allow me then to sort of like say, I can do my part now, which is take that business strategy and start to formulate the right marketing activities for the right reasons. And that way, you know, what you're hoping to do is eradicate that unnecessary spend. But the biggest waste of money is when you're bought in for a particular set of skills and then you're just asked to do a bunch of stuff because you're there. Stefan, what do you think? How do companies, not even CEOs, how do companies waste and waste money on their fractional CMO when they could have gotten so much more? Uh, well, I would say, first of all, is attribution, the correct attribution. Uh, you mentioned the example with, oh, I, we brought you 3,000 leads. I yeah. mean, those are, I think at that point, those are not even MQLs. I don't know what was that marketing guy doing, but I wouldn't hire that marketing leader, to be honest. If, uh, if I as a sales get a, a list and there is no, I don't know where they came from. There is no intent. There is no nothing. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Assign 50 of each to my salespeople and then what, you know, just like wasting my salespeople time. Yeah. Um, I would say attribution clarity in terms of like what brings in leads and how open are they? Are they actually curious just to find out more? They're ready to buy, right? So basically attributing to the right type of uh, funnel. And um, the activities that you're making, for example, uh, we realized um, in the company that I work with, we really realized uh, early on that although uh, conferences, events are quite expensive, they and the lead can be, you know, 5000 It could be an opportunity could cost $5,000, right? Which right. is not cheap. But although you can come up from an event with one lead, it can be, it can, the ROI can be worth it, you know? So then we realized that, okay, well, we have to max up the events, you know, so we go to as many events as possible, um, uh, but like as attendees, not with the booth, right? So that's how you max out the, the things that are working. So clarity in terms of attribution um, and honesty, I think are very important, but honesty between marketing and sales. Uh, the second is I'll come with the story. Um, I used to work for, um, um, I, I worked with a, a HR HR company and, there was this like very wise man. Um, and at the end of the, uh, every queue, we had a sort of a review process. At the end of the queue, he tells us, it's like, guys, you are not failing enough. I'm like, like what, what do you mean? He's like, look, I want you guys to fail more. Like you're not experimenting enough. So you're not failing enough. You got to like 90% of what you do has to be a failure. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm okay with failure. It's like, you just have to try more. And I was like, I was shocked at that time. I was like, wow, he wants me to fail more. <laughs> he wants me to fail more and that's quite weird but then i realized you know like if you don't try you you cannot win right and if you specifically in the market nowadays everyone wants to scale um which leads to my third point um you have to experiment you have to be brave enough to experiment um i'd say you would have you would need to have the balls to say your ceo that okay um i know that this event well, whatever you're doing might not bring the uh, it is not what, what you like but i have i'll put my 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 well my honesty on on stage so i'll be the one who'll take the responsibility who'll take the hit but i think it, it might work so the more experimentation you do it actually the better as a as a fractional cmo because you're you're trying to prove that you're worth right and if you combine that with honesty you might get somewhere yeah Okay, so let's uh, let's switch to a different scenario for a second. All right, yeah. we're going to talk about your friend. So your friend recently became a fractional CMO, and hypothetically, and has just landed their first client. Right, it's about to walk into a company where um, there's already a marketing team in place, like junior folks, and mid-level folks, a few managers. Right, no CMO obviously, because they're the fractional CMO. But like, what advice or lessons would you want to pass along? to this fractional CMO who's about to walk into a client where there's already an existing marketing team? Um, well, I what would should say, they do or not do, or what should they, you know, keep an eye out for? Um, hire, uh, hire, um, hire, uh, hire, fa- uh, hire fast, uh, fire fast as well. Yeah. Um, I've had a few examples when I went into an existing, um, uh, marketing team and, um, to be honest, I wish I would have fired. There were a few people who I was expecting them to look a, a good player. You can see a good player from day one. You know, if it's not the results, it's the attitude that you know uh, kind of tells you it's a good player. 
and you need good team, uh, good team players on the marketing team. Um, I like my marketing team being lean. So if I see a, a bad a bad apple, uh, I right. try to get rid of it quickly. That's what I would tell my my friend. It's like, look, go through the very often marketing is responsible for SDRs, and you need to be very careful with SDRs, especially if like you're in B two B. They'll say, oh, I, the leads were not good. I had a bad month. Blah 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 blah. Okay, give you them a bit a little bit of time. But if they don't have consistency, then you have to fire them. So I would say, first of all, fire the people who are not consistent. Uh, second is try to get through. Um, there is in, in organizations there is a lot of like politics involved. So like the person might not be a good uh, producer, might not be good at his job, but he's good at you know leaking ass or any other yeah. you know. Protect. Protect. Yeah. So you have to be. You have to figure out what is what and and find the currency and at the end try to like get rid of that person. It's gonna make your your life uh, hell. Um, other advice: uh, try to be friends with your head of sales because you're gonna do uh, be doing a lot of w- good work together in case you're aligned. So um, don't necessarily you don't necessarily need to give uh, knives as a gift to to his wife or partner, but um, you necessarily need to have an alignment of what sort of leads are you sending them and what is working and what is not working. Um, um, I would say start with this. Um, you, actually, I had a case when I had my, uh, my friend of mine, um, Jane is a fractional CMO, and mm-hmm. we had calls every week. <laughs> we were reviewing like, okay, you did this, I did this. I was like, okay, uh, this is how I would do, but again, you do you. Um, and I think he's doing great now. It's his third con- uh, company that he's working with. Tony, how about you? What lesson or advice would you pass along to a friend who's just about to do their uh, new yeah. engagement and there's already a team in place? Like maybe they maybe they normally work with startups and now it's a more mature company and so there's already been people hired in. Yeah, you, so you are not this, so so I what do I think about this? I think it's it's a really big one to unpack this, right? Because there's yeah. so many different scenarios. You know, you're, are you going in as a frat? What type of company? You said a more mature company. You know, if you're going in in that kind of operational role, role with problems around leads, et cetera, then, you know, where, where Stefan's at is you're, you're right in that front line there. And, you know, you've got to make decisions and you've got to make decisions fast, et cetera. I think that's different to where I tend to in, inhabit, right? And that's why it's quite a difficult question to answer. So I'll fire these these sort of, I've got kind of five things that I would I would yeah. say. And, and actually, I think some of this actually talks to what Stefan said as well. Actually, the number one is you've got to build trust. And I think Stefan's absolutely right where he's saying marketing and sales have got to be lockstep. They are there for the same purpose, right? To develop, win customers, grow revenue, retain revenue. There just shouldn't be two different dialogues going on. And and that kind of, you know, it's marketing's fault, it's sales fault. So I totally agree, but I'd actually go go wider there and actually say, if you're sitting there in a CMO as part of that senior leadership team, even in fractional, you know, you've got product, you've got finance, you've got HR, you've got operations. And all of these guys have got, their own objectives. All of these guys are largely operational. So they're coming at things, particularly in slightly larger organizations, you get so much siloing. And I think one thing you can do, you are fresh in, you are from the outside, is seek to build trust, help people find what they've got in common. They're like I answered earlier on. And, you know, that really is going to help you, particularly in that first 90 days, okay? The second thing is, is look, let's be honest about this. You don't know what you don't know. Every engagement is going to have its unique bits and pieces. You're going in because you've got a toolkit of consistent skills, but you don't anticipate or assume anything. Get in there, turn over the rocks, take time to understand what's going on, right? You've been brought in because there's a gap of some sorts. You've got to get under the skin of that as quickly as you can. The third, I think, is fractional CMO, no, that CMO piece is you need to be a leader. You need to exhibit all of those qualities and behaviors of leadership that got you to where you are. And again, back to I pick up on Stefan's point, I totally agree. Be comfortable with failure. You yeah. have got to be the person that when something goes pear-shaped, says, that's okay. That was part of the plan. 
make everybody feel comfortable around you make everybody feel that you know, they're looking to you to understand how to be successful you need to be able to show them the path and that means you know setting expectations helping them understand and you know and connect with what you're being asked to do people are bright right if they understand how they fit then they'll often come up with the answers so if that's a key thing around being a leader um pragmatically create the plan own the plan do not let the people paying the bill, you know, if you treat them as a client from my agency background, as right. soon as they've got control, you've lost it. You will be asked to do whatever it is that they want you to do, whenever it is they want you to do it. You have got yeah. no control over that at all. And your team won't thank you either because now you're firefighting and you're firefighting them and you're firefighting everyone around you. So have the plan, set the outputs, set the inputs, here's what we're going to do. The great thing about that is that then, you know, everybody's on a 90 day time frame here, whatever you signed up to, there's a 90 day renewal, right? Because everybody budgets and thinks quarterly. So right. now if you've got a plan, you can actually report back on that plan weekly. You can identify progress and really important, if you're going into the engagement fresh, you can see your fractures and your barriers and call them out. Too easy to get rid of you, right? Too easy. Yeah. So that actually, you know, do not give up ownership ever own the plan and the last one is more general advice i think which is plan your next okay that could be your next 90 days with the client it could be actually hey i don't do this but i know you know within my network here folks this keeps it in the family it's going to keep your dialogue going it could be your exit but make sure you you know how you want to end whether that's, you know, the end of one continuation of the next or you're getting out at all. So I think those five, build trust, don't know what you don't know, be a leader, create the plan, knowing the plan, and plan your next. So let, let's invert that question a little bit then, uh, Tony, and then we'll go mm. to Stefan. You're not the fractional CMO. Your friend isn't, right? Your friend is one of the people who works on the marketing team. The company's just hired their first ever fractional CMO. This person didn't even, had never heard of even what a fractional CMO is. right? And they're suddenly told, by the way, tomorrow, New person coming in, fractional CMO. Like, what's one or two things that that employee should or or could expect, and what changes can they expect now that a fractional CMO has been brought in? So what? So the question then, Dean, is what should they expect if the fractional? Yeah, CMO like if I'm the employee, job? like what okay. should I expect here? Is it going to be exactly the same I, as hiring a regular get? CMO, or you know, okay. should I be concerned about anything? So is there an opportunity for me here? What's going on? Yeah, I, I think, you know, if, if I was in that situation, what I would what I would want is to mm -hmm. get clear alignment on why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because if you've been brought in, there's some sort of gap. Whatever we're doing as a marketing team, right. it's not quite right. It's either they're not the right mix or like Stefan says, I'm producing 3000 leads a month and you know, sales is saying they're all rubbish. I can produce leads. I'm an expert. You know, this is what I've been doing. This is my career. This is how I've built it. I don't need somebody to tell me how to produce leads. What I need to understand is why am I doing it? Because if the answer is we only need 500, but we need them to a much better quality and we need triage SDR, et cetera, people will figure that out for themselves. It's back to that leadership point. They're, they're looking for clarity. Um, you know, is the other thing that can happen is clever people will get creative when they don't have clarity. Right. Some people do nothing, right? They don't, they don't like to change because they're scared of that change. Others will just simply interpret what they think the right answer is. And so I think a good fractional CMO, when they come in, that team should look to them and actually say, okay, why am I here? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Um, what I wouldn't expect is for them to kind of meddle around in the tactical from day one. But that's coming from my point of view, right. because if you're looking at a team that, you know, the chances are it's like most folks come to work to do their best, right? There's a few folks out there who maybe come in and do a lousy job. And I think Stefan identified that, right? You've got to weed them out pretty quick. Stefan, yeah. what do you think? You're, you're an employee or a junior or mid-level employee on a marketing team. The company's just hired a fractional CMO, like, Mm -hmm. what what should you do as the employee what should your moves be okay um yeah, off the radar try to get a get a meeting what are you doing yeah usually when a new uh there are changes in the c level so uh it means uh increased pressure pressure on results uh, yeah. marketing or sales 
it means the company is not happy with the results. So you, usually there are some. Um, so it means there is they're going to try to scale. So scaling means more, there's going to be more money. So maybe new com- there's going to be new people in the department or there might be some changes within like, um, uh, you know, responsibilities. So my first thing would be uh, meeting the CMO and asking uh, him or her um, or them um, how uh, how is my uh, performance judged now? What oh, are the new question? Yeah. Um, what are the new? Okay, so how do you see if before you had an inbound department consisting of two writers and a, let's say a, a content marketer? How do you see the new content uh, department? Uh, do you want to invest more? Uh, as again, as an employee, I don't know what's working better or not, right? Maybe I'm, I'm going to ask him, him or her or them, um, what what do you want to focus on more and in the next queue? So I know um, maybe the problem is not in me. Maybe it's just he wants to grow or he wants to grow a different department because that's that's what will bring brings more leads. And then maybe in three months, I should be, in fact, looking for a new job because what I'm doing is not bringing uh they don't see that they cannot attribute that to money right so if i've been writing i don't know maybe i'm i was doing content because content in sas is the god everyone is clear clearly crazy about content like if they don't see content as attribution to, to revenue well i should look for a new job then because right. you know um it, it might disappear and um again the question would be i would like from that person from the cmo for a new I knew I, I want to see a new design for the department. Like, okay, uh, this is my vision. So the first and biggest thing is leadership, as Tani mentioned. I would need to see leadership from that person. I want to see what's the vision for the department uh, and uh, and uh, the KPIs by which everyone is judged. Um, so, yeah, that's the answer. Okay. And then um, uh, uh, this has been great, guys. I really appreciate this. We're going to like work our way out of it, right? And so... Uh, uh, Stefan, we'll start with you. So it's a three-part question, but two parts are super easy. Maybe the first one is too. Do you prefer, as a fractional link CMO, do you prefer um, fixed-length engagements or ongoing engagements? Basically, sprints versus marathons. And then also, uh, be, given the answer that you're going to give, um, how uh, who should be reaching out to you and how should they connect with you? So awesome. sprint or marathon... Who should be contacting you, and how do you prefer them to contact you? Uh, I prefer marathons. Yeah. To be honest. Um, sprints are good, but like, um, I really want to get into the product, understand the product we're selling. We cannot do. You cannot do good marketing without knowing the product and right. your ICP. Um, so that's why it's better if, even if it's like half a year, I know that for half a year I'm being left alone, and so I can sort of sell to my audience, the, the product that I want to sell. Um, how can people contact me? It's very easy. It's like, um, uh, it's my email, Stefan at uh, L-U-C-K-B-O-S-T-R-S.com. Luckboosters.com is my website. But you can also find me on LinkedIn, Stefan Repin, R-E-P-I-N. That's my last right. name. Um, and who should be reaching out to you? Um People who are in B2B, uh, people who have companies and um, who want to grow uh, their their product or service and they have uh, their sales cycle is quite long, let's say from three months and up and they're selling enterprise uh, solutions to enterprise. Right. Uh, best match with, with SMBs who want to sell to enterprise. All right. And Tony, Sprint or Marathon, who should be reaching out to you and how should they get in touch with you? So I, I think my way of answering this, and maybe I'm just sore from working 17 years in enterprise text, um, <laughs> it is, is everything's a sprint because it's 90 days. Yeah. Um, my preference is at least there's, there's the plan and the discussion is the marathon because then you're tied to strategic objectives. Tactical is just, it's, it's nasty. It's difficult to kind of generate you know, really quick results in really quick time. But if you're in startup, that's absolutely the name of the game, right? So there's a little bit of is it marathon, is it spring? Depends on the type of engagement. Um, you know, and I, but I think that that's the reality is it's everything is 90 days. So plan around that 90 day time frame. So based on that, who should be contacting you and how should they do it? 
So for me, it's it's CEOs. It's where they have stalled growth. It's where they've said, hey, we've got the business strategy sorted, but for whatever reason, that implementation is just not happening. I'm not seeing the actions I expect. That happens. It happens, I mean, all up and down the size of organization, but I'd say the sweet spot for me from experience is in about that 50 to 500. Right. So it's where a certain level of organizational complexity is the thing that gets in the way. Lots of people running around with their own version of what the new message is and the new strategy, and, you know, it's a mess. So CEOs, 50 to 500, stall growth. Um, find me on LinkedIn is the easiest place. Um, so it's Tony Watkins. If you want to look at the stuff that I do, ChiltonMarketingStrategy.com. Mm -hmm. um, but you can link off of that from, from my, my profile. So keep it simple. Straight LinkedIn, away you go. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, guys. This has been fantastic. I really appreciate it. It was great to have you here. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. And we'll see you in the next episode. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you.